Before we even begin, we're doing a special giveaway for all our loyal subscribers and we want you to be a winner. You have a chance to win a brand new jersey of whichever club you want and even have it delivered to your doorstep for free. And all you have to do is three simple things. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like and share this video and stay in the comments which club shirt you want. And that is all. Football players can be really toxic, you know. Some of these guys are so toxic that they often cause division in dressing rooms. Let's look at some players who fall into that category. We'll start with Kylian Mbappe. Over the years, we've seen just how toxic this guy can be. In 2022, he got in a fight with Neymar on the pitch over a penalty, and in that same game, he shoved Messi unprovoked. That same year, he threw a tantrum because Vitinha didn't pass the ball to him and refused to join the team in the counter-attacking move. He's been involved in physical fights in dressing rooms and he reportedly even told the PSG authorities to force certain players out. And this summer, we've seen just how toxic Mbappe can get with this whole transfer saga. He just decided to make life extremely difficult for PSG, a club which has treated him like a prince and given him everything he wants. Even in France, it's the same story. Remember Euro 2020 when his attitude nearly broke up the team? Nah, Mbappe is a really toxic fella. He's lucky he's just insanely talented, so people don't mind putting up with his toxicity. And that's pretty much the same story with Neymar. Yes, we mentioned that Mbappe fought Neymar over a penalty, but actually, Neymar did it first. When he first arrived at PSG, he fought Cavani on the pitch over a penalty. The same thing Mbappe did to him. Also, Neymar's off-the-pitch antics, like that time when he punched a fan, for example, have made him pretty difficult to deal with. There's a reason coaches he's previously worked with, like Xavi and Luis Enrique, decided that they didn't want him this summer. Another really toxic forward player is Romelu Lukaku. First of all, the fact that his loyalties don't lie anywhere in particular makes fans frustrated with him. This guy fell out with Man United and their fans, and that caused a massive drop in form. He then went to Inter Milan and regained his form, only for him to leave to follow the money to Chelsea after two years. No problem, right? Wrong. He hadn't even stayed up to a year at Chelsea and he was already talking about moving back to Inter, saying that that's where his heart is. Okay, he then secures his desired move back to Inter and you'd think it would be all good from there, but no. Lukaku started flirting with Inter's rivals Juventus and that caused Inter legend Javier Zanetti to declare that the club feels betrayed by the Belgian's behaviour. Oh, and by the way, the Juventus fans have protested the potential sign signing of Lukaku. They don't want him at their club and they made sure to make it known before any mistakes was made. Now, Chelsea, Inter Milan, Man United, Juventus and almost every other club around Europe don't want Lukaku because he's seen as a very toxic person. Another centre forward who appears to be pretty toxic is Aubameyang. Yes, he almost always has a huge smile on his face, but his nonchalance and indiscipline has often made him a pretty difficult player to deal with. His wife Mikel Arteta stripped him of captaincy and even terminated his contract so he could leave the club. For the coach to have done that to his most valuable player and the only Premier League Golden Boot winner on his team, you should know how toxic Aubameyang must have been in the dressing room. Elsewhere, in London, it was Crystal Palace who was suffering from the toxicity of Wilfred Zaha. Zaha's main problem is his short temper. He's always throwing tantrums over the littlest things on the pitch. At every point in time, it just looks like Zaha's ready to fight. The players, the refs, or sometimes even the fans. He doesn't care. It's surely a lot having to manage that kind of player, regardless of how talented they are. But you know there's no way we could talk about toxic players without mentioning the OG himself. You know who we're talking about, don't you? Go ahead and take a guess in the comments, but while you do, let's show you something really interesting. <laughs> The cat 
Now, the OG that we're referring to is none other than Mario Balotelli himself. In his prime, Balotelli had enough talent to go on to become the best striker in the world, but his toxic attitude kept limiting him. This guy right here once threw darts at a youth team player during training and called it a prank. Mancini said he would give Balotelli a punch on his head every day for 10 years if he could, and Mourinho called him unmanageable. <laughs> nah, wait a minute, do you know just how bad you have to be for Jose Mourinho to call you unmanageable. After Inter City and Milan had already had it up to here with Balotelli, Liverpool somehow thought that they could change him. But it took them just one season to realise just how toxic the Italian is. So they sent him back to Milan where he came from. Another guy who's just like Balotelli is Diego Costa. You already know what you're getting with Costa on your team. He loves to stir up fights and cause the most unwarranted altercations. But perhaps the biggest evidence of just how toxic Costa is is that his own birth country doesn't like him. <laughs> Scratch that, they hate him. Diego Costa was born in Brazil, and when the entire country was preparing to host the 2014 World Cup, he decided to switch allegiances to Spain. And get this, there was absolutely no record of anything that was done to Costa by the Brazilians. The judicial director of the Brazilian football confederation said he chose Spain because of money and declared Costa persona non grata in the Brazil national team. Bro, imagine being hated by your own country of birth. If that's not the height of toxicity, then what is? Okay, Ivan Tony cursing out his own club is right up there too, to be honest. This guy has been caught on camera saying fuck Brentford and saying that the team he played for is nowhere exciting. Let's also not forget his bad gambling habit, which earned him a a very lengthy ban is heavily costing the club right now. Richarlison is another pretty toxic guy. He always seems to be in a bad mood and he has such a huge ego. He was accused of being a toxic influence in the Everton dressing room just before he left. Oh, and remember that infamous interview when he went on a rant about not getting enough minutes under Conte and declaring that the season was shit? He really had the guts to put his coach on blast out there in public. That is something you should just never do. We'll now wrap up this list with the GOAT himself, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's arguably the greatest player that has ever kicked the ball. But let's face it, CR7 can be really toxic. When he was put on the bench by Eric Ten Hag shortly after the Dutchman became coach of United, the striker was so unhappy with it and he showed it in the worst way. He walked out on the team during a game. And worst of all, when the season went on a break in preparation for the World Cup, he got in an interview saying all sorts of things about it his employers, an interview which forced Man United to terminate his contract. No matter how much love you have for him, you just have to admit that that was so damn toxic from Cristiano Ronaldo. But for you, who's the singular most toxic footballer you've ever seen, past or present? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so that you never miss out on new content. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye!